Uh, I'm Judy Singer. I'm the Senior Vice Provost for Faculty Development and Diversity. I'm also a Professor of Statistics at the Graduate School of Education. And I want to welcome you to being a faculty member at Harvard University. Uh, this is actually our fifth annual New Faculty Institute. Uh, I have been in the Senior Vice Provost role for four years plus, and this was one of the things that I really wanted to do for the new faculty of the university, because when I was hired, there were no new faculty orientations in any of the schools, and the new orientation for faculty was going to an HR meeting about your health insurance. Uh, it was absolutely not substantive, and it was not a sense of feeling part of Harvard University. I've actually been at Harvard since 1984. I started as a junior faculty member and uh, was promoted up through the ranks and, and got tenure in 1993. And I've stayed at Harvard uh, all my career because Harvard is a fabulous place to be a faculty member. It's just a great place to, to have your career. And it is that for several different reasons. One is the people around you, the colleagues that you have at Harvard University, and some of them you've already met in your schools, but one of the reasons we do this event today is so that you have an opportunity to meet people, not just from your schools, but also from across the entire university. There's a wealth of riches at, at the university. Interesting people in fields from astronomy to zoology. Uh, if you watched the news last night or uh, read the paper this morning, Karen King from the Divinity School is at the Vatican yesterday. Uh, basically saying that she may have found some evidence that Jesus was married. This is getting more press than almost anything coming out of Harvard research uh, in the last few weeks. You also have fabulous students. Many of you already started teaching. We already know that some of you are going to be popping in and out because of classes this morning. The, the students here are just a an incredible resource and they never cease to amaze you with questions that'll leave you stumped and questions that might lead you to change your research agenda and questions that might lead you to engage with them in ways that you never thought possible. I'll also say that uh, for better or for worse, the name Harvard opens doors. It gives you opportunities. One of the things I frankly can't stand when I'm at a conference is, you know, they have your name and then you have your institution uh, right beneath it. And they look and they say, it says Judith Singer, and, 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 and then they say Harvard, and then they say something about Harvard. Um, there's a downside to that, but there's also an upside to it. And there's a way in which uh, it, it, is, it is a privilege to be a faculty member here at Harvard and to be able to take advantage of it. And it's also a fabulous place to do research. Um, and I think right now most of you are new enough that you're focusing on your teaching and getting your sea legs uh, set. But I also hope that those of you who are scientists are getting your lab set up. Those of you who are humanists are finding the libraries and finding resources. And those of you who are social scientists are finding the wealth of riches of the social sciences across the university. So, even though I've been here for about 30 years at this point, um, I want to share with you two lessons about Harvard that uh, I wish somebody had told me uh, along the way. And the first is to get a sense about the size of Harvard. Uh, it is an incredibly large university. And so there are just over 1,000 tenured faculty, 1,050 uh, tenured faculty, uh, about 500 uh, ladder faculty, assistant and associate professors, another 700 lecturers and senior lecturers and professors of practice. And that doesn't include our medical school, which has about another 10,000 faculty in the hospitals. So you could actually imagine Harvard sort of filling um, Fenway Park, uh, if we got all the faculty actually together. Uh, we're also a much more diverse faculty than the Harvard of years past. Uh, just over a quarter of the faculty are women. At the assistant and associate level, over a third are women. Uh, oh, about 20% of the faculty are minorities. That's a very different Harvard University. And one of the things we're striving to do uh, at the university is to have the faculty of the university more closely resemble the student body. And that's something that we're deeply committed to <clears throat> and we're welcoming you here to be a part of it. The second part of Harvard that uh, you may have heard about, but I'm just going to mention, is how decentralized the university is. Uh, you've all been oriented into your schools, and there's a phrase here called every tub on its own bottom, E-T-O-B. Uh, you could go uh, for years in the old days without meeting a colleague from across the university, from outside your department or outside your school. And one of the things that we're doing under the leadership of President Faust is trying to go from every tub on its own bottom to a one university mantra, to have you feel like you are part of Harvard University as a faculty member. And I can say this from personal experience. When I was an assistant professor and I was up for promotion to associate professor, went through the review, they got 
and letters. I went and I had a meeting with my dean, and my dean said, um, you're doing great, you're publishing, your teaching's great, you're doing everything we're asking you to do. There's one thing that you really need to work on. And all ears when you're at that kind of uh, meeting. And she said, you have to get known across the university. That part of what your responsibility is as a faculty member, in my case at the Graduate School of Education, was you have to be a citizen of this university, an intellectual citizen of this university. You need to have conversations with people across the divide so that you start to think outside your own box into a broader sense and also start to feel part of the Harvard University faculty. So one of the reasons we do this event today is to have you meet faculty from across the university. And uh, after President Faust's opening remarks, we'll have people go around the room and say where they're from and what their field is in school. And we hope that you will reach out to colleagues that you meet here today. Uh, we will also be sending around a list of everybody who's in attendance, so you can send an email. You can also get on our GeoMap, which is another faculty tool for finding people from across the university. We're also developing a Harvard faculty finder for finding people with common interests. We're really interested in breaking down these divides. I hope you can see that that's part of the, the message. And so you will be meeting faculty from across the university, and you'll also be meeting new faculty. And one of the things about new faculty is they like meeting other new faculty. So there's really a way in which this is a virtuous cycle of people who are fresh and open to ideas and, and uh, not necessarily set in their ways. So I see President Faust in the back, miraculously. So I have the distinct honor of introducing her, which I'm going to do uh, in two ways that probably are uh, not the usual ways that, that uh, President Faust gets introduced. Um, you can read about her bio online. I just want to talk about two different features. One is that uh, in the last week, Drew has had the pleasure of becoming uh, what I think we call in the business a rock star. So Drew was interviewed by Stephen Colbert uh, earlier this week. And uh, in addition, the premiere of the documentary Death in the Civil War by Rick Burns, which was aired on PBS last night from 8 to 10, was premiered at the ART from 7 to, 10, 7 to 9 with a panel afterwards. And for me, as someone who has known Drew basically since her arrival at Harvard, what I, and she's always been an administrative role. She came here to be dean of the Radcliffe Institute, uh, which she did quite ably, turning Radcliffe College into an institute of advanced study with uh, great success. And she's been president of the university since 2007. But in most of the roles, Drew has been seen as an administrator, which as somebody who has taken on an administrative role, um, we're proud to do it, but we also are still scholars. And one of the things that I think is so wonderful about uh, seeing Death in the Civil War, which I commend to you. I also commend to you the Colbert interview. <laughs> I, you can decide which order you want to see them in. Um, is that you see Drew as a scholar. It says Drew Gilpin Faust, historian, not Drew Gilpin Faust, president of Harvard University. And it's clear from the panel discussion last night how much the Rick Burns making this documentary, and it's clearly his documentary, but based on her work uh, and, and other historians' work, translating that for the public and getting that kind of information out, I think must have been a truly special moment for Drew. Uh, the second special moment for Drew, and I'm, I think I'm about yeah, nine hours late, is yesterday was Drew's birthday. <laughs> so happy birthday, Drew. Uh, and uh, th thank you very much for taking the time after your busy, out of your busy schedule, actually, which is incredible that you were up probably till midnight last night to join us here this morning. And I don't know if you, like I, had the power outage in Cambridge, but uh, at about 3 o'clock all the lights went out, and about 5 o'clock all the smoke alarms went off. So uh, it's definitely been a, a disturbed sleep. So let me welcome Drew Faust to the podium. Thank you, Judy, and thank you for inviting me. It's really exciting to see all of you here, and I hope over the weeks and months and years to come, I have a chance to get to know many of you and hear about your fields and your interests and uh, the research projects you're pursuing. But for today, I thought I'd just say a few words about being a new faculty member here and some of the things we hope for you. And when I was a junior faculty person, I had no orientation whatsoever. I was, this was at the University of Pennsylvania a thousand years ago. And I just was told where my classes would meet and that was it. 
and it was somewhat surprising uh, because you had to find out everything for yourself. And I basically never had any kind of discussion about teaching. That was particularly something you had to find out for yourself. And so I think how much things have changed in those uh, many decades and how they've changed for the better. We hope to help you find your way around this university. As Judy said, it's large, but its resources, intellectual resources, are enormous. And I urge you to try to cross those boundaries and find people in other schools, in other areas whose work interests you, to find libraries, museums, uh, theater, the kinds of opportunities that this large uh, institution can offer. But we also have a variety of uh, new kinds of programs to help you figure out how to do your jobs. And I want to say a word about how important teaching is to us, and I'm sure how important teaching is to you. I think it was believed in my day as a junior faculty member that some people were born teachers and some people weren't born <coughs> teachers, and it was just kind of tough. Uh, if you weren't born a teacher, you struggled along, uh, and that was that. But what I think we all understand so clearly now is no one is born a teacher. Everybody learns and that there are a variety of ways to enhance your effectiveness in the classroom, to enhance the kind of resources you can bring to the classroom, and to imagine new ways of communicating with students. This is, of course, especially true in an era when technology has changed so dramatically. And I think all of us find ourselves faced with new kinds of tools, you know, just on a monthly basis almost, that can have a uh, an impact and and introduce change into how we handle our classrooms. So we have at Harvard a program called the Harvard um, Initiative in Learning and Teaching. It's a program funded out of the president's office to encourage experimentation and innovation in teaching across the university. For this year, we have funded 47 innovative programs, initiatives within that broader umbrella, where people are just inventing new ways to think about how they do their work with their students. So think about the, this opportunity when we next ask for submissions, but also think about what people are doing around you and ask and observe what your colleagues are uh, undertaking, because I think we can all learn a lot from it, one another. We also have a new initiative called edX, which is a digital learning initiative together with MIT, our partner, and now Berkeley as well to put courses online. And that doesn't mean to videotape someone's lectures and just stick them up on the web. Instead, it's to really ask about what is possible in a course and how do you organize it differently? How do you do assessment differently? How do you chunk it out into different kinds of units as you perhaps evaluate students or have them evaluate themselves um, electronically along the way? So part of the message of all this, I think, is that you have come to higher education as no longer it's students, but it's employees, it's leaders, at a time when things are really shifting. And the kind of world that you will inhabit at universities a decade, two decades from now, is going to be the world you make, the world you help make, because we all are facing such dramatic transformations. It's a more global university. Higher education is increasingly global. These technologies are enabling us to do things we couldn't have imagined before. <clears throat> we also find ourselves with new expectations in the broader public about what higher education should do for the country and for the world. And so all of that is going to become an important part of your lives, and I really look forward to your contributions to it. And one of the aspects of this day-to-day -day that I hope you take from your experience is being in this room together getting to know one another. Because another thing I found a thousand years ago when I began teaching is I felt very alone. I didn't know who else to talk to about all the issues that I was facing. And talking about teaching is really fun. And it's also a wonderful way to get new ideas, to console yourself that everybody has the student who's difficult, everybody gives the bad lecture, everybody has a test that doesn't work at all, everybody finds grading onerous. So talk to one another, be a community of teachers, and be a community of faculty who can really come together as uh, supports for one another. And so I hope from one another and from Harvard University, you get the kind of support that you need 
to do your important scholarly work and also to do the very important work of teaching, which is at the heart of the university. So welcome to Harvard. We're delighted you're here. I look forward to getting to know you better. And I know that the day that Judy and others have put together for you is going to be wonderful, and you're going to look back on it for years to come. So thank you very much. Thank you.